This is Mr. Sweet Parliamenti from Full Gospel Church of God. Works as college lecturer at the same time servant of God. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am very much interested to introduce myself at the same time to deliver few God's words in front of you. I feel very happy. I would like to speak about the topic of who is reverent. According to the scripture, I would like to give few suggestions to this present era. The supreme power of God has kept burden in my heart to deliver the truth and to proclaim his words to his people according to the Bible. The Lord Jesus Christ is reverent. Apostle Paul said, Be strong in the Lord. Once, if we say in the local churches, there are some servants, pastors, keeps reverent before the names. According to the Bible, scriptures, according to the word of God, reverent is not correct before the names. In the Bible, it's not mentioned from Genesis to Revelation. But how far it is correct to keep such a reverend before the names? I just wanted to speak few words according to the scripture. Reverend means worshipping to the Lord. He is worthy and eligible to have this type of title for supreme power of God. We all are his children, so we are worshipping and praising his name and adoring, exalting his name and praying to the Lord. Why should we worship to the Lord? The Lord Jesus Christ was died on the cross of the Calvary for the entire of the world and behalf of us. He paid price for us. He was buried and rose again on the third day. That's what we should believe Him and we should accept His pure truth God. Bible declares that Peter chapter 1 16th verse be holy for I am holy. Jesus Christ is holy, pure, sinlessness and he is very much perfect. So the Lord is trying to making us to get purification. That is the intention of God. He said I am the light of the world. He persecuted a lot, trouble, bother. He got so much Herculean task in his physical life. Though he became silent as goat and sheep. Because of that reason, we must worship to the Lord in every day and every moment. But the meaningless pastors are keeping reverend before the names. How sad it is. I am not going to accept such a word. Dear reader, reverend, what are you thinking about God? Our reverend is Jesus Christ. The Lord is consuming fire. King of King and Lord of Lord, High Transcendent, True Creator. So when we go through the true word of God, we could not give any kind of chance to keep such a reverent before the name. I would like to mention few leaders which, are, which is mentioned in the Bible. Apostle Paul was not reverent, but God's minister and servant of God. Abraham was not reverent, but he had good relationship with God. Moses also not reverend but mediator between God and men. Joshua is not reverend but servant of God and he led the people from the wilderness to milk and honey land by faith. He was a faithful leader. So in this trend when I am looking about the Bible, people could not follow such a titles in their life but they need to surrender according to the scripture. Hence, I am telling to all the members, do not immerse in evil actions. So we should go through the Bible doctrine and we have to look unto the Lord. We must humble in the sight of God, then God will lead us. Bible declares, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. It means, Apostle Paul says, I am following the footsteps of Christ. So you should follow me through the God's words. Because he had such a burden, he had such a responsibility to separate in those days 
That's what he has been telling all the members and exhorting to the church members especially. If we see in our present Christian churches, reverence, presidents, treasurers, treasurers are not standing in apostolic doctrine without establishing such a truth, just that they have been doing such a ministry. Observe it once. Physically, ethically, morally, traditionally, once if we go through the Bible, what Bible declares to us, what Bible teaches to the people, that is very important. So there are some servants of God following apostle doctrine. I am very much pleased by looking them at the same time thankful to the God. So I just wanted to mention according to the Bible, Isaiah, book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16. Therefore the saith the Lord God behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. God already established the church in the Geo long back ago. We need to attach with that that stone was tried stone and it is precious corner stone. So we are not at all make it like impure that is already perfect and purification stone. That is constant stone Everyone should step on that and not only that in the Proverbs chapter 9 verse 1 there is one word wisdom hath built her house she hath hung out of her seven pillars. There are some seven pillars according to the scriptures we should go through that. Once if we look the Acts chapter 2 verse 37 to 42 there are some seven pillars I would like to mention those seven. First one is repentance. The meaning of repentance. First, who are we? What are we? This all nothing. But I am nothing in the sight of God. I have to repent for myself. I have to accountable for everything. Such a way we need to get proper repentance in our life. Second step, baptism. Don't come for namesake. What you have understood such a gospel. What you have understood such a truth. After all getting such a, a spiritual food from the Bible doctrine. Then get ready to go for baptism. That is second step. Third one. Gift of Holy Spirit. Nowadays Holy Spirit is a very important. Once upon a time people doesn't give such a importance for the Holy Spirit. But now. So very useful, if man doesn't get any kind of Holy Spirit, it's difficult to enter into the kingdom of God. So everyone need to get such a Holy Spirit that is must and should. And fourth one is salvation. Salvation from untoward generation. As long as we live in this world, we may commit some type of mistakes, but we need to be very much perfect and we have to have such a commitment with Almighty God that Almighty God reveals what is truth, what is false. When the truth is in front of us, we should accept it. When the false is in front of us, we should deny and we must remove the false. So we could not give any kind of chance to enter into the false, but we must accept such a truth and we should go on from the part of truth. That's what such a salvation from untoward generation. The salvation once we get, that is not from heaven and ever, but we have to save and protect till the death. That is very important according to the Bible. And fifth one, apostolic doctrine and fellowship. What is apostolic doctrine? Apostolic doctrine means God has prepared 12 members disciples. The disciples learn more from the Jesus Christ because Jesus has healed so many people Jesus done so many miracles and wonders at that time particularly this all type of disciples looked with their own eyes during the time they had a lot of courage oh the master is doing, doing such a grateful activities so we have to have such a faith in our life even Christ declared that you must pray till the rapture. 
you must have such a covenant with Almighty. So you need to alert and active. You must go on. That's what Apostle Doctrine 12 disciples received such Apostle Doctrine. Such a doctrine we need to follow in this thread. If we go once in the entire of the Bible, we are not going to look any kind of denominations, but there is only one church. We are body of Christ. The Christ is our head. So, sixth one is breaking of bread. Breaking of bread means taking such a Lord's Supper. After all, participating in this whole type of situation, I mean, after all, getting such a purification, sanctification, so we need to put such a hand in the Lord's Supper. Without having any kind of blemish, without having any kind of impure, we could not. So, first we need to have such an open heart. First we need to have such a good covenant with Almighty God, friendship and fellowship, so that we can able to take Lord's Supper in that particular breaking of bread. And seventh one, prayer. Prayer brings the victory. Prayer is a very powerful instrument in this trend. In those days, Moses prayed, Manna has come down. Jehoshua, Joshua has prayed. He stopped immediately, sun and moon. Elia has prayed. He could not get such a rain for three and a half years. So when we pray, God will do greater things in our life. So these seven pillars are very important to us. Once I am asking to you, do we have these seven pillars in our churches? That's what I want to say according to the scripture, Psalm chapter 32 verse 8. God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go. I will instruct. When, when you are having such a thirst, when you are having such a greediness to do something, to eat the spiritual fruit, not to go for lustful thoughts, you should have such an angry, something that he wants to do, greater things for the sake of Lord, because Lord is good. When you are having such a thirst, longing spirit, God will instruct us to live into the eternity. That's what I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go. I will guide you with my eye. You must set right. As long as we live in this world, we have to have proper connectivity with Almighty God. And we need to go on by doing such a specific ministry. Whatever the position you may be, whether big or small, whether the congregation is very small or it may be very big, but following Bible doctrine is very important. And we will transform to the eternal life when we go through these seven pillars. Whether you eat or drink, glorify the God's name. I am not going to criticize to anyone, but I am just telling what God has given such a power and authority. We need to follow those seven pillars in our life. I just wanted to say, omnipotent and omniscient, omnipresence is reverent. Above high transcendent is reverent. Almighty God is reverent. Supernatural power of true creator is reverent. Who are you to keep your reverent? That's my question with God's love. You don't have any kind of authority to keep reverent before the name. I am challenging to the word of God. I am telling according to the scripture. The Lord himself had worthy to keep reverent. In Jeremiah 33, 3, he said that, Call to me, I'll answer you great and mighty things which you do not know. When we do not know such a great things, we need to call and we need to knock unto the Lord. Then God will reveal, he will declare what to do, where we have to go. So, I can suggest to all the Pastors, preach the word of God as pastor, but not covenant. Preach the gospel as anointed suffering, but not covenant. Deliver the doctrine as spirit-filled person, but not covenant. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear young pastors, if we have those 
fundamental qualities in our life we will go through the right doctrine that's what i can tell you try to follow the truth leave all the of traditional and old rules confess with god lord you are my god i wanted to go on according to the scripture how god's spirit leads in my life even john chapter 18 32 jesus said to those jews which believed on him if you continue in my word you are my disciple if you are having continuation or if you are sticking up with one word if you are accepting such a truth you are my disciple and you shall let you shall know the truth truth shall make you free when we understand the truth we are not under someone but we will under god we will under supernatural power of god that's what we can say dear brothers and sisters observe the truth stand on the word of god the lord's doctrine is very important in this friend so that we will become holy persons we may become one disciple has 12 members disciples how that they are and we may become greater value to fight with evil people the truth shall make us free and truth leads happiness excitement i just wanted to say according to the bible Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 he gave us some apostles prophets evangelists and some pastors and teachers so every one should follow the five pillar first one apostle apostle means is the divine person who lays the foundation for new churches he appoints local leaders and gives them advice after he moves and he will keep in touch with them to do the will of god he will not go in his own way he observe he watch the congregation he understand that capacity knowledge of the past christ apostle have a special calling to fulfill in every generation second prophet prophet means spokesman between god and men when king hezekiah has become sick in those days a prophet isaiah has come and told that hezekiah your house is not clear you should set right at that time he was suffering with the disease when he heard such a word from the prophet of isaiah he turned up to his face pray the lord lord once upon a time i was very much faithful obedient now forgive me i want to look greater life i want please extend my life such a way the hezekiah king prayed because of exhortation of prophet prophet told in that way condemned and given such exhortation he took such a supplication from god that's what here he speaks to church leaders and others and tells them what the future holds he will exhort and console the body of christ third one evangelist evangelist means he is the man who preaches the gospel of christ to sinners he is the one who gives such a who or uh, brings such a deliverance from the people his message is direct and in the power of god's word men are moved to make a decision about christ and fourth one john chapter 10 verse 11 to 18 that is past he is a man he is a man with a shepherd heart he cares for everyone yet watches over the flock protects and corrects feeds and comfort god's people in a local church that is the duty of pastor and fifth teacher is a man who has love for god's word and god's people he seeks to teach divine truth both in a practical and personal way he ministers to the minds of men that is they in nehemiah 8:48 my dear brothers and sisters try to understand the truth do not keep such a title reverend our reverend is only one had such eligibility that is our god is our jesus christ by knowing or unknowing you may keep such a title so far but from today onwards you should get such a realization without keeping such a title that is something
try to go on by doing such a five categories that is first one apostles second one is prophets third evangelist fourth pastor fifth one teacher and before that the church must should follow the seven pillars that is first repentance is a very important second baptism it should come from his whole heart not by forcing he has to understand the entire gospel third holy spirit holy spirit is useful for each and every person without the spirit leading we cannot we are helpless we are hopeless we could not do with our own activity with our wisdom and knowledge but god's delight power is mandatory for that we need to get such a special holy spirit and fourth salvation salvation we need to protect as long as we live in this world and fifth one apostle doctrine do not go in your own way what wait for the voice of god what god tells me that i have to do you have to go down and try to resume such a salvation not just salvation belongs to the present at the same time past at the same time future also and the another one fifth apostle doctrine try to follow the apostle doctrine sixth breaking of bread lord supper also very important seventh we need to pray as long as we live till the rapture so may god bless this message in abundant way thank you very much may god gives blessings on us thanks a lot for giving such opportunity thank you one and all